What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of the AI Timeline where I cover the coolest AI developments in the past week. My favorite news this week is probably Midjourney's new weird function, which is a parameter value between 0 to 3000 that you can add to the end of your prompt when generating images. The higher the values, the weirder it gets, and starting from 500, you will see some very unusual stuff and it gets progressively weirder and weirder. When you think it can't get any weirder, nope, you're wrong, it gets even worse. I don't know why, but I really like like this function. Next up, we have this company called Inflection AI, which I have never heard of, and they somehow just raised $1.3 billion to build the world's largest AI cluster with 22k H100s. And for more context, Inflection AI is a company that is developing a personal AI or personal intelligence chatbot where you can just chat on your phone. But $1.3 billion? How? Why? I actually have zero freaking clue. On the other hand, all of Meta's AI models on the hugging phase just disappeared out of nowhere. And not long after, Hugging Face tweeted out a malicious user took over controlled the organization account of Meta and Intel with reused employee passwords. It was compromised in a data breach on another site. So yeah, apparently someone that hacked the account was like, yeah, I hate open source and decided to delete all the models. Like, wh why? What is there to hate about open source stuff? What were they trying to achieve? But yeah, Hugging Face using the Hugging Face emoji in the statement makes this even funnier. Sorry, someone hacked your account and we're looking into it. <laughs> and there's just a Hugging Face emoji there. But there is actually yet another hacking this week. The big Taiwanese chip maker TSMC, which manufactures chips including for Nvidia, received a 70 million ransom because some of its hardware suppliers got hacked, and the hackers obtained classified information for server initial setup and configuration, which is probably not as relevant. But yeah, of course, they didn't pay a dime. I mean, no one in the right mind would. Next up, we have our weekly dose of LLM news. This week actually has some really interesting papers, but if you're not interested in LLM, feel free to skip this segment using the chapter function. The coolest technical LLM news this week is probably the paper called Classifier Free Guidance in LLM. And as as its name suggests, this paper explores implementing CFG to guide the behaviors of large language models. And if the abbreviation sounds familiar to you, yes, you have probably heard of it or seen it in generating images. CFG is the value that is basically labeled as the parameter for creativeness in text to image generation. In other words, how much influence your input prompt has over the resulting image. But why is CFG here for LLM? Well, if you don't know, LLM is basically auto completion on crack. It always Always has been. It is essentially a predictor that guesses the next text token based on the previous token. However, this creates problems like LLM can't foresee what it will generate and basically cannot plan ahead. CFG then allows the user to control the output of the model by adjusting the guidance strength of the prompt. In this example, you can see the difference in tone and how CFG sampling was able to maintain the tone throughout the text while the vanilla sampling cannot. CFG not only improved arithmetic reasoning but also improved better reasoning chains which enforces multi-step reasoning more accurately. And with this, CFG can basically emulate a model that has twice the parameter count, which reduces the VRAM usage needed and the training cost that comes with the larger model. In the paper, it even mentioned that a 7B Llama model with CFG can beat Palm with a 540B model. So super big LLM might no longer be a great financial investment for large corporations. Next up, we have extending context window of large language models via positional interpretation population. And as its name suggests, this paper proposed a method to extend the context window by using rotary position embedding short for a rope. Originally, for any LLM to expand its context length without any training requires a method called extrapolation. However, extrapolation is bad because it can ruin your output really easily. Think of it like predicting weather. Imagine you can magically predict the weather for the next 10 days, but one day someone asks you to predict the next 20 days, so you use the pattern for the first 10 days to predict the next 20. That sounds pretty reasonable, but until all the first 10 days were sunny, so the model assumes it's always sunny, however water vapor has actually been condensing and the last 10 days is just pouring down rain non-stop. So extrapolation can basically lead to very inaccurate predictions because it assumes the future will always follow the same pattern. So this is where rope comes in. It allows longer text sequences to be squeezed into a model, like fitting 4096 tokens into a 2048 context length model. 
model. And this is achieved by letting the models understand the order of the data. But why is the order important? Well, the architecture for LLM is based on transformers, and unlike recurrent neural networks, transformer doesn't process data sequentially and consumes all at the same time instead. But why is position even important in the first place when there is just a limited amount of token space? They propose a method called positional interpolation for rope to extend the context window for transformers. For the sake of simplicity, let's take a model with four text tokens context length as an example. Normally, if you store discrete numbers, you will store it in a discrete position like 0 to 3. However, positional interpolation takes a different approach. Instead of representing each position by just a discrete number, it represents positions as points on a smooth curve like a cosine curve. This interpolated space between two discrete positions can then be used to create new positions, which can fit one extra token between two discrete positions or even more than one depending on how many times the size of the context length you want to increase by. So now if we fit one extra token between two positions, there are now places for eight text tokens in four text token context space. In their paper, they mentioned that using rope to extend the context length by four times only has around 2% of degradation, and increasing by 16 times has only around 10%, which is insane. But of course, all cool things come with a downside. Fine-tuning a 7B Llama model to have four times its context length requires 32 A100 GPUs. And for increasing it 16 times, 128 A100 GPUs are needed, all because of the VRAM limitations. Since one A100 has around 40 VRAM, a total of 5,120 VRAM is needed for this. And for contrast, SD 1.5 was also trained with 128 A100s too, and it cost like 500k a week to train. Alright guys, the day I plan to publish this video, another bombshell paper just dropped by Microsoft. In this paper called LongNet, they propose a transformer variant that can scale up to 1 billion tokens. If we count 100 tokens for 75 words, that is like 750 million words, which is like 100 bibles as the context length. For contrast, this is the graph comparing LongNet to other LLM models and it's comedically impressive. But the first big question is of of course, how? How have they done this? The rope method we just talked about was able to scale a few times, but long net just broke the chart without any warning. So what happened was that they came up with something called dilated attention. It looks like this mathematically and looks like this graphically. The main principle behind this is that the attention allocation decreases exponentially as the distance between tokens grows, while the standard attention used in transformers does not do that. This then allows a linear computation complexity in a logarithm dependency between tokens, so scaling up to 1 billion is then made possible. What's even better is that dilated attention can be swapped in for any other attention modules in other LLMs, so great news guys, context length would probably no longer be a problem next year. This is a really in-depth paper on dilated attention, so definitely check this out if you're interested. Next up, we have Obelisk. This is the first open source multi-model dataset that contains naturally mixed image and text documents. All the data are extracted from the common crawl, with 350 53 million images that are relevant to a text and 115 billion text tokens. But you might be thinking, what's so new about this paper? Well, this is much different from a model trained with just text and image pairs. Those models are just good at pairing images and text and do not know how to reason when images are presented, especially needing to reason over multiple images. And since none of the big companies are bothered to release how they have trained their multi-model LLMs, <coughs> GPT-4, <coughs> this research aims to tackle how it can be done. Shout out to Hugging Face for this paper. On the topic of multi-modal, this research called Lens turns multi-modal capabilities into modules that can be attached to any existing LLMs. What's so different about this compared to research like Blip or Flamingo is that Lens do not need any multimodal related pre-training. Well, it still grabbed the pre-trained clip and Blip because how else would it understand images? But by slapping an LLM on top, which they call it the vision module, it can then puzzle those attributes, tags, and captions together and generate an incredibly rich visual description that Blip or Flamingo is not capable of doing by themselves. So even though you would still need 8 to 100 to run Lens, at least you wouldn't need 500k TPU hours to train something like Flamingo, and it can be attached to any existing LLMs. However, its shortcomings would definitely be its heavy reliance on clip and blip. 
And I can definitely see the vision module has the possibility to over extrapolate the image details from these tags and generate untruthful information about the image. Next, we have a psychology crossover in LLM research where the authors explored the possibilities of LLM retaining a certain type of personality from the data it was trained on. With the rise of personality or roleplay chatbots, this paper has conducted research on personality simulation and tested them on GPT-4. The result of this paper says that the personalities are consistent and reliable, with some expected conclusions like larger instruction fine-tuned models are stronger at mimicking and the personalities can be shaped to mimic a specific person. We have seen people bringing images back to life with AI to reminisce about their past loves, so there's definitely nothing stopping individuals or companies from creating an app that reads all of someone's old message replies and creates a chatbot that mimics that person. The future is definitely interesting to say the least. And there's this new mathematical paper called the Shape Transformer that proposed a new theory for understanding the behavior of deep learning models like Transformers attention mechanism. In this paper, the authors have developed mathematical models to describe and predict the behavior of these network architectures. This paper looks incredibly challenging to read, but if you're a fan of maths or a grad student, definitely check this out. Generative AI for Programming Education, Benchmarking ChatGPT, GPT-4, and Human Tutors. The conclusion of this paper is that GPT-4 comes close to Human Tutors' performance for several scenarios, and ChatGPT or GPT-3.5 that is available to everyone is bad at teaching. So yeah, using GPT-4 to help you study is a great way to learn fast. Lastly, I gotta give it to this bad GPT paper from Wuhan University. The naming of this paper is pretty much the embodiment of the skull emoji. Some people even call this naming attention seeking. For its paper though, they proposed a type of language model that's designed to understand and maintain lengthy chat threads. And it's trained in a way that optimizes its ability to keep the long conversations as context, which allows for more coherent, in-depth, and meaningful dialogues. Is it good? Well, apparently, it's also a Chinese LLM, so most people here wouldn't really care much either. Lastly, on the non-research paper side of the LLM news, ChatGPT browse mode that can be accessed with a paid subscription has been disabled indefinitely. This is because ChatGPT browse mode can bypass paid content like what we saw last week with AI Breakfast post on how linking a paid word article will provide you the full text. So they have turned the mode off to try to fix it because that doesn't sit right with their values. So yeah, that's all for this segment of LRM news. And here is the rest of the news, free for all rapid fire style. SDXL, which was in my headline for last week, published their technical report a few days ago. It states that SDXL has a unit backbone three times larger than the previous ones, with SDXL also having a second text encoder. It has new conditioning schemes and is trained on multiple aspect ratios. On top of SDXL, they also introduced a refinement model, which may be an upscale model for SDXL to improve the image's visual fidelity. I'll link the report down in the description if you're interested in reading more. And SDXL got leaked. You can now download its base model and refiner on Hugging Face. Dream Diffusion is another AI research that is converting brain signals into images. Previously, we have seen a few brain reading research that uses fMRI signals to try to decipher our brain waves and read what the signal is. However, this time, this research uses EEG, short for electroencephalogram, instead of fMRI like the previous few research, and compared to previous state of the art, there is a huge improvement in the fidelity of the generated images too. On the other hand, this week is a pretty good week for 3D related AI research. First, we have MV Diffusion, which is an image generation method where it is able to generate panorama or multi-view images from text. This research is tackling 360 or an immersive 3D scene generation, and reminds me of this 360 LoRa which I've seen before that can generate panorama images using stable diffusion. It also has a multi-view depth to image generation that can take in mesh and depth to generate textures for complex 3D scenery, which is pretty neat. Second, we have Magic123, which is a 2D image to 3D model research that is able to generate high resolution 3D mesh with a decent texture given a 2D image. By employing textual inversion and monocular depth regularization, they were able to encourage consistent appearances across views and to prevent degraded results in this architecture. The unseen side are very well textured textured too. The only major limitation is the size of the 3D texture where the border between the backside and the front side still struggle to generate a texture that connects them together consistently. Third, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. No, I'm not counting. That is literally the research paper name. It is yet another 2D image to 3D model research. On the paper, they claim that their method generates better geometry, adheres more to the input image, and creates more 3D consistent results. They claim that the mesh quality is high, but also 
its render speed is fast. However, I feel like Magic 123 still looks slightly better than this one. Fourth, we have any image to 3D. It is very similar to the previous two, and yes, it is yet another 2D image to 3D model research, but I think the highlight of this research is that it can generate complex 2D images like humans and turn them into 3D models. It is still capable of generating other things too, and damn, the rate of text to 3D research popping out is increasing so fast. Or probably yet another wave of FOMO publishing. For the fifth and the last 3D related AI research, this research is called Michelangelo, and guess what? Drum roll, please. It is yet another 3D model generation based on 2D images, but this one incorporates text, and it actually has mesh that is very clean when queried for simple objects or simple concepts compared to all these previous research. But if you ask me which one of these is the best, I'll tell you I actually have no clue because I have enough of text to 3D for today. This code, this entangled control for referring human dense generation in real world, and finally, a breath of fresh air. What this research does is that it basically can repose a person in a dense video, in paint the background, and generate the person on top with a specified pose. The image in painting part is really clean, but when it is applying a target pose video onto a video, you can see the person's arm would glitch or flicker around. But that may be due to the lack of frame rate and the reference pose being too laggy. What is interesting though is that in distance, the arms would actually drag the clothes upwards. That is definitely a bit sus, I would say. Remember Sam XQ or XQ Sam that I talked about a few episodes ago? There is a new research called Sam PT that has applied it into video tracking. This research paper proposed a variation of Sam XQ called Sam XQ PT, which is used to track objects or points in the video using image segmentation. It is incredible how fast the research was made, but I can still see it lacks a bit of temporal consistency on its official results because the border of a static object would still flicker. Lastly, on the research paper side of news, Hugging Face released a paper called Let It, an image editing pipeline that utilizes DDPM inversion with semantic guidance. So yet another alternative for text-based editing, guys, and this one is a pretty lightweight one too, no optimization nor further training needed. Onto the non-official research paper side of the news, and an official PyTorch implementation of StyleDrop has been released. To refresh your memory, StyleDrop is this Google research paper that is incredibly good at copying styles than anything we have ever seen, because it adhered to the reference style so faithfully that when it generates an image that is referencing the style of Van Gogh, the results feels like the actual Van Gogh drew it. Wonder Dynamics has finally ended its closed beta, and now everyone can access its incredible all-in-one pipeline that includes motion tracking, background inpainting, color correcting, and character conversion. Like this robot is actually all processed by Wonder Dynamics and replaced the human fighter in the original video. All it took was just a few clicks from the user too. In this example, someone even imported their own 3D model and replaced the person in the video with that, which is pretty sick. Oh, and I'm not sponsored by them by the way. Generate Anything Anywhere in Any Scene or PackGen is a text-to-image research that aims to create controllable diffusion models using object boxes to specify a location of an object within an image. This is kind of like latent coupling, which is a technique to separate the image generation space into different sections, and each of them would follow a different set of instructions. PackGen can also copy an object identity similar to what Dream Booth does, but it also has the flexibility to place the object in a specified location using boxes. It can also compose an image of multiple different unique learned objects using different boxes. It works with art style accessorization, attributes, and even hybrid. And before we end this video, here is a bonus segment of the latest video to video or image to image video or whatever you call it, results fest. The first one is Harry Potter converted into anime, and even though the eyes are still not consistent, the quality that is generated was surprisingly good. This other one is an image to image video of a person turned into an anime figure, which looks weirdly realistic. More amazing work from Tokyo Jab, and this one is especially cool because at the end it even zoomed in onto the clothes that the character is wearing. And he also showed his workflow so you can check out his Reddit post. Let's end today's episode with more towel guy to hot girl image to image video. People are really getting better at this. And segue into our sponsor, Imagine. Imagine.r is an online AI text to image generator with a super nice user interface. To get started, all you have to do is to add a prompt, select your required style specification 
applications and press generate. Right now, you can use hundreds of art styles and models to create content in all niches from logo designing to abstract art and from illustrations to realistic images. They have a pretty large model collection too. Apart from the text to image, they also have other features including in-painting, image remix, and background expansion. So definitely give them a try if you want an option that's available on web, Android, and iOS. Thank you Imagine for sponsoring this video. A big shout out to Andrew Laschelias, Chris Ledoux, Alex Shea, Alex Maurice, Deegan, Migilim, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow my Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.